Amen. What a blessing. Thank you to the senior choir. Go tell it on the mountain. Amen. Jesus Christ is born. We greet you this morning from the sanctuary of the Gardner Grove Baptist Church, 3511 Wheeler Road. We bless God and pray that you will join us for our Sunday school lesson and the remainder of our worship experience. Sunday school lesson this morning is called to participate in a promise. The key verse being Matthew 1, 20 through 21. Joseph, the son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Again, we see the title of our lesson, we are called to participate in a promise. And our outline is faith defined. I think most of you are familiar with um, the definition of faith in the book of Hebrews, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is an assurity of what you cannot see. Amen. Faith brings it to reality. And we see here also that Joseph is a man of faith. We look at our first verse. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Well, you see, Joseph has now discovered that his bride is expecting and she's pregnant and he does not know the father. But God himself will not leave you to be ignorant, brethren. God will make it known and God is going to make it known. And we move to the next verse that then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privately, privately, which is private or which is quietly. He determined to take care of the things in his own way, and he was going to do it very quietly because he loved Mary, and he was not willing to make her a public example. Uh, I think you know that in Deuteronomy 22, 22 through 25, the law, amen, demanded that Mary be stoned for her seemingly now unfaithfulness to Joseph. I want you to un understand that Mary was not unfaithful to Joseph. And uh, God through an angel is going to reveal this uh, through to Joseph. Verse uh, 20. But while he thought on, the, on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Joseph is now in a dream. And he said to Joseph, Thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Thou son of David, uh, he, he, in order to uh, bring forth a king, there has to be heredity. Amen. And you see now that uh, Jesus, um, the angel is connecting this uh, child that is to be born to the lineage of King David. So, uh, we, we bless God that God is moving in his own way, in his own time, and the angel uh, instructs Joseph to take Mary uh, to, unto thee to be thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And you know this now, you would think this is a dialogue, but it's, more, it's a more of a monologue because Joseph is listening. He's not saying a word and I think that's one of the best things we can do when God speaks amen amen we need to listen amen uh, moving on to verse 22 and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he sh shall save his people from their sin I think you know the name Jesus mean God saves amen and he shall save his people from their sin uh when Mary has when Mary has this child, you will name him Jesus. Amen. And thank God that we know that Jesus is his earthly name. And we we move on because we're going to get another name for Jesus. Uh, verse 22. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets. Uh, Basically, uh, 
this is a fulfilling of a prophecy that was given 700 years earlier. And Joseph being a, a righteous man, no doubt is aware of the prophecy and, and uh, he is willing to hastily conform to the truth of God that is revealed by the angel and Joseph immediately does what he is told to do. The first thing he does is he, marry, he marries Mary. He goes ahead with the marriage that he was willing uh, to put her aside privately. But bless God, God would not have it to be. Amen. God made him aware. And I'm telling you, God will not leave you ignorant. If you desire to know, God will make a way. If you desire to grow and to know, God will make it happen. This is the prophecy. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted God with us. And this is the Hebrew interpretation of Emmanuel, and that is God is with us. And we move on to our next verse. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, I'm telling you now, he did exactly what the angel had commanded in the dream. Joseph, when he awakened, he did exactly what the Lord had said him to do. And I think we would do well, amen, to obey God instantly. And Joseph obeyed God not just uh, this time. He does it continually. It, throughout our text here, you will find that he was given instructions three different times, three times, including this one, and he immediately obeyed God. He didn't ask questions. He didn't talk back. He just immediately obeyed. In verse 25, and he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Already had married Mary. He was also instructed to name the child Jesus. Joseph did exactly as God had said. And I ask you today, my brother, my sister, will we be just as nice as Joseph or will we be, be just as obedient, amen, to the word of God as Joseph was when it was revealed to him to take Mary, make her not a public example, and you don't have to worry about the law. Joseph does several things, and I just want to bring a few things out that Joseph teaches us today because I think the lesson we look at it, amen, that should be a takeaway, that should be some practical things for us. Uh, he was no doubt hurt when he saw that Mary was expecting. What would you do? But Joseph had a righteousness about him that you see in his attitude, he refused to get even. He was not going to hurt Mary. Even though he was hurt that she was uh, pregnant with someone else's child, but it wasn't someone else. This was the incarnation that, by the Holy Spirit she had conceived. Uh, he was a righteous man, and he desired to please God. So we should look at that too. And what it looks like to obey God is basically what Joseph is teaching us today, that we need to answer his call and to obey him continually because God, through Christ, he enables us to refuse to get even when we're done wrong. It takes God to refuse to get even when you have been done wrong. He loved Mary and was willing to call the wedding off, but he was not willing to hurt her. That's a blessing. Love trumps what we call the legalism, the I do's and the I don'ts. My brother and my sister, I thank God, amen, the need to always be right that is found in legalism, love trumps that. Love doesn't have to be always right. Love doesn't have to always win. Uh, I thank God I learned a good lesson yesterday. I thank God for uh, both hands. And we, we, we're inundated with the uh, instructions to wash hands these days, and it's a good practice. But do you know it takes both hands? One hand washes the other. It's like um, teeth and tongue. They operate together. And they operate so well, it's very seldom that the
teeth bites the tongue. But it, it might happen, but it doesn't happen often. Amen? So we look at our, the fact that uh, we're called to learn some things from Joseph today. And one of the other things that I, fa I like to bring to our attention is how we tend to fall out when people violate our do's and don'ts, our preferences. But my brother and my sister, when we do as Joseph and as he loved Mary, forgiveness becomes the pillar. And it allows us to become pillars in our families and our churches as well as in our communities. So you and I, likewise, as Joseph has done toward Mary, that's the attitude we should have toward one another. True belief is not just hearing, but true belief is hearing and doing. James has already told us that we are to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. Amen to the glory of God. God has spoken in our lesson. God is speaking even at this very moment. And we have to believe that God, rather we have to believe God enough. We got to believe God enough to do what he says and to do it now, not later. Don't put it off. Do it now. Do it today. Step out in faith on what God has called you to do and what God has promised in his word. If you will step out on faith, I'm here to tell you God will bring it to pass and it will happen as we speak. We just believe this morning that God has called us to participate in his promise. God has promised, amen, to save the world and you and I are called to be witnesses to go ye into all the world and talk about this great gospel, the great gospel of the birth, life, death, and resurrection, and coming again of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. At this time, we invite you to uh, pray with us this morning. Our prayers go out to uh, uh, my family. I want to send my deepest sympathy to the Russell family and the loss of Willie James Russell, my cousin, uh, Chairman Henry Grady Veal, there in uh, Washington County at the Mount Sinai Church. We just pray God's blessing upon that family. Amen. And we just thank God for his ministry with the true gospel singers and his uh, just excellent man and his example that he set for so many there in Washington County. Also want to pray for Sister Tabitha Sapp, our very own, the Magruder family, Deacon Willie Magruder and his wife, Carletta and their son Trayvon and we also want to lift up again the Veal family in the passing of Deacon Henry Veal and Sister Irene Maison there at Greater Mount Cana. So we just bless God and we pray for you, you and especially you. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God is our call to worship and all that worship you must do it in spirit and in truth. So Father God we're praying for the needs of the people that are watching today. We're praying for those families, the names that we call. And Father God, we're praying that you would just truly meet their needs according to your riches and glory. Everybody that is tuned in, we pray for direction, Father God. Give direction to your people. Not only give direction, but give protection from your people. Danger seen, unseen, as well as disease. And then, Father God, we just pray that you give guidance. Show us the way. Hold our hand, guide our feet, guard our minds. And Father God, let us speak only what you speak. And then, Father God, we just want to pray a covering over the people of God. Let no weapon formed against the people of God. Don't let it prosper. I pray, Father God, that you will lay a rebuke against the enemy. When he cometh in like a flood, raise up a standard against him, Father God, that he will be defeated and God will be praised. To the glory of God in Jesus' name, church said amen. My brothers and sisters, I ask that you uh, get your electronic device or your Bible. I call it Word Perfect, the perfect word. And turn with me to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. And we will begin at verse 1 and we will read to verse 5. Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah chapter 53. Let's take your time. Amen. Patience is a virtue. Amen. Take your time as you find it. And for those of you that are watching, amen, the scripture should be on the screen. Isaiah chapter 53, 
verse 1, who has believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. This chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Let us make ready now. Uh, let me back up. I just say this is the word of God to the people of God. And now let us move forward to make ready now to worship God through giving. We're going to ask that Minister Vincent Peterson will come and lead us as we give God our best. He deserves nothing less. Good morning, church. Good morning. We now will worship through giving. We can mail our tithings and offerings to 3511 Wheeler Road, Augusta, Georgia, zip code 30909, or we could drop it in our secure mailbox or through cash app, the dollar sign GGBC AUG. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for being the giver of all things. Thank you that your promises are sure. You are very faithful. Your word says that we will find joy in our offerings, our time, talents, and money to meet the needs of others. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And let all the saints say amen. amen. The next voice you hear will be that of yours truly. We will now have a selection. Amen. Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. And after that, we will come this morning with the message from the book of Isaiah, chapter 7.
Amen. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Glory to the newborn king. Amen. We bless God. Amen. For the newborn king. Amen. He is none other than Christ the Lord. Amen. Uh, just so blessed to know that he's a king above all kings. Uh, he, he's not like the lion. The lion thinks he's a king. But he's not the biggest animal in the jungle. He just thinks he's king. And he's not the tallest animal in the jungle, but he just thinks he's the king. And he's not the most lethal, deadly weapon. There's snakes out there, amen. But he just thinks he's the king. Amen. But I thank God. Amen. Our Christ Jesus, he is king of kings. He's Lord of lords. Amen. We ask you this morning to turn with us to Isaiah the chapter 7. And I'm going to look at one verse. Isaiah chapter 7, one verse. And it reads, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Somebody said, I've heard that before this morning. Amen, but we just want to focus on the one verse. Amen, there's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot here, my brothers and sisters. Amen, but I'd like to use as our title today, God is still with us. And the fact that our theme will be Jesus came to save us from our sin. Basically, he came to save us from ourselves. But God is still with us today. The struggles of 2020 is a call to come to Jesus. And it's also a very good reminder. And it's good for us to be reminded that God is still with us. It's good to know that God is still with us. My brothers and sisters, I just thank God that he is still with us with us. And as we notice our lesson here, amen, my brothers and sisters, we know that the, uh, God drops this one verse of prophecy. If you go back and read it, I never read around it, but amen, it's, it's just in the midst of God trying to correct faithless Ahaz, who was the 12th king of Judah, God drops in a prophecy. And he makes it known Amen. Even though faithless Ahaz does not quite get it. But this prophecy will come all the way through the line of King David. And therefore, Jesus has a right to the throne. And this virgin shall be with child, and she shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted God with us. We recognize that this is the Advent season. This is the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the Christmas season, and God has promised us another season called due season. In due season, if you would just humble yourself, God will exalt you in due season. I just believe God has something greater than just our daily load of blessings that we call for. Amen. God has something greater. Uh, as I look at the lesson here, it says you shall call him Emmanuel, which is God with us, because Jesus himself is God incarnate. Not only that, he is divinity veiled in human flesh. And he is the God man, 100 percent God, 100 percent man, the God man. And therefore, it is the incarnation. You and I are here as a result of what we call procreation, amen, a man and a woman. And Joseph, no doubt, could have thought that there had been a procreation going on with Mary, and she was expecting another man's child. But it was not a procreation. It was incarnation. She had been overshadowed by the divine spirit of God, and she conceived, amen, and therefore he never had human blood all of his blood was royal blood. So therefore, his blood is sufficient to cleanse your sin and mine. I want to make a point here today, uh, not trying to upset anybody, but 
Sin is a contagious, dreadful disease. Physical disease is a, is a manifestation of sin. Not that if you're sick, not that it's uh, a manifestation of your sin, but I'm talking about original sin. Uh, the original sin of Adam brought the curse on, amen, and sin is a manifest, uh, rather physical disease is a manifestation of sin. But we thank God, amen, even though we have physical disease and there's sickness out there and we have a pandemic, we have the COVID-19, I just believe that God is about to do a great thing. And I pray that he does. You ought to pray that he does because God can raise up a standard and rebuke sickness. God can heal everything that we are facing. The struggles of 2020 cause us to come to Jesus because he is able, he will fix it for you, and he will fix it just now, not tomorrow. He can fix it today. You know, as I know, in our troubled nation, and in, is in need of the hope of Jesus Christ yes. and the truth of God's word. Amen. And that's for at the communion table, I love to say we're coming today. We're coming to calibrate, as it were, with our scales. Uh, when I was in the workforce, we had to keep the scales calibrated because they will get off. Amen. Instead of selling you a pound of meat, we're selling you three-quarter pound. Amen. Four pounds. But the scales have to be calibrated. And so must our lives be calibrated. You might not believe it. We need a right now a, a check up from the neck up, amen. Because some of this stuff that's coming down the pipe, amen, and some of this stuff that going through our mindset, we need to raise up the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. We're going to look at this thing this morning. What God, since God is with us, God wants us to seek Him. God wants us, rather, He wants others to see Him in us. And God wants to work a miracle in you. And we close with Jesus will fix it for you. It's been a difficult week, and I don't stand before you. Dr. C.S. Hamilton made it known a few, uh, 35 years ago. When you stand up, amen, in church, don't stand up giving excuses. Don't talk about how bad I feel and what all I've been through. Amen. People need to hear a word from God. Yeah. So I want you to hear a word from God. It's been a week, but amen. I've always found when I'm at my worst, God is at his best. Amen. He must increase and I must decrease. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, let me go forward. Amen. God wants us to seek him. Amen. He wants us to ASK, ask, seek, and knock. Amen. If you want it, ask God. Amen. Everything you need, God's got it. And if you will seek it, you will find it. And if you will knock, the door shall be open. God will do what we can't do. Amen. I want you to know everything you can't do, God will do it. Amen. But we can't do what God alone can do. And what we can do, God will not do it. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, we need to acknowledge, amen, as we seek him, amen, God will only do what we can't do. But we can't not do what God alone can do. I'm learning if God doesn't do it, it will not get done. I'm beginning to see the, the, the handicap of self is only so much that I can do. Amen. When it comes to turning around some thing that I would say I need to fix. I remember an old chairman over in Sandersville would say, boy, you don't have enough sense to fix that. Some things going on in church, you don't have enough sense to fix it. You better let God, amen, fix it because he will fix it. God wants us to seek him early in the morning, noonday hour, late at night. Let us seek the Lord and seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Amen. Second outline said, God wants others to see him in us. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, we are one in the spirit and we are one in the Lord. And the best thing we as believers can do is to live a life that give testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. I'm here to tell you, amen. Uh, people don't, and church folk, let's get this right now. People don't believe what we're saying, but they believe everything we do. Amen. People, people are watching you. Amen. They don't, they don't hear what you're saying, 
but they hear what you're doing. Amen. Someone said, oh, but preacher, your, 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 your uh, life is speaking so loud, I can't hear a word of your sermon. My brother and my sister, we need to really understand God wants others to see him in us. And the best way we can do that, my brothers and my sisters, we need to understand AMA. Amen. It's called ability. We need to understand it. If we do ability, ability determines what I can do. M is our motivation. It determines what I do. But the, uh, uh, but, but, but the A, attitude, determines how well I do it. My brothers and my sisters, I stopped by to tell you today, the only way people are going to see him in us, we have to get our AMA right. Our ability is, you can't do what you can't do. So the only thing you can do is what you have the ability to do. And you do have the ability to love like God. Amen. Amen. And, and, you, and you can live like Christ, but you have to let him live the life through you because, amen, it's impossible for you to do what only God can do. Yeah. Uh, amen. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, the motivation part, motivation determines what I do. Amen. Without motivation, my brothers and sisters, amen, we will sit on the seat of do nothing and we will do pretty much as the frog that sit on a log. Amen. And he sit on the log and it was, it was four, amen, and one decided to jump. And I asked how many was left, and everybody said there was three left. But my brother and my sister, it was, on, it was still four frogs on the log because one only decided to do, he never did it. Amen, I, I've read it uh, this week, and I was speaking with my wife. The, gr the grandest of intentions, the greatest intentions that we have, our greatest intentions uh, nothing compared, amen, our greatest, uh, our greatest um, intentions are nothing compared to the grandest things we do. I don't care how big your intentions are, they are nothing compared to what you do. And look at verse, uh, of, uh, the attitude in this here. Attitude determines how well I do it. You can do things, you can do it ugly or you can do it awesome. And the best way to tell you to deal with this here is always understand if you do something awesome, awesome ends with M-E. Ugly begins with a U. I'm talking about the alphabets now. Not Y-O-U, but a, an alphabet. Awesome ends with an M-E, and U, I mean ugly, begins with a capital U. My brothers and my sisters, I'm here to tell you, I believe God wants us to have an attitude to do it well. Amen. And we will do it well when we treat others as we would have them treat us. And uh, <clears throat> Highline number three, God wants to work a miracle in you. God wants to reside in your heart. It takes a miracle for God to reside in your heart. Amen? If, if, if God is to reside in your heart, as the Sunday school lesson was discussing this morning, you're going to have to RSVP and invite him in by faith. He's not coming in, amen, on his own. You've got to he set it up where you and I, amen, could have our troubles over if we would just invite God in by faith. And when he comes in, and like I say, he wants to do a miracle in you, he will put a new song in your, in your mouth, amen. He'll give you direction. He'll give you a new walk a new talk, amen, he'll give you a new determination. God wants to work a miracle in you. And the last thing I close with is that Jesus will fix it for you, amen. He will fix it for you today, amen. He will heal your body, he will heal your soul and your mind, amen. He will do it one of a few ways, Amen. He can do it by way of miracle. He can give you an instant miracle and heal your situation. Amen. Your situation might be that you need a physical healing. You may need an emotional healing, may need a mental healing, but whatever it is, God can heal your situation. I'm talking about right here, right now. Somebody need to step out on faith and trust and believe God that God is with us and he's with us for a reason to do what we can't do. And he can do what he alone can do. Yeah. And then my brother and my sister, God can heal using modern medicine. Amen. This is Jesus fixing it for you. 
he can fix it because, you know, my brother and my sister, I tell everyone, go to your doctor, but before you go to the doctor, go to God. And it doesn't matter how God heals you, amen. They can lay hands on you. They can uh, put oil on you, amen. They can dunk you under the oil, amen. They can lay hands and put spit on you, amen. It doesn't matter, amen. It doesn't matter how people heal. Say they prayed for you, they touched you, amen. But my brother and sister, all healing comes from God. And I believe there's a healer in the house this morning. He's a healer of the hurt inside. He healed the hurt inside of Joseph, and Joseph had a happy home. Somebody out there today, you need to allow God to heal the hurt inside of you, and you'll have a happy home. We need to stop, amen, fighting God, because there's some things God allows to come our way to break us. He allows to break us to make us. But you got two choices when God tries to bait, break you. You can get mad or you can allow God to break it. Most of us choose to get angry. And we reach last out at people. And sometimes we get angry with God. My brother, my sister, why don't you receive the brokenness this morning that God has sent your way? It is for a spiritual healing of your soul. God allows some things to happen so that you will get closer to him. I'm told, amen, that when the shepherd finds the sheep that is contrary, he breaks the sheep's leg and carries the sheep until he heals. And the shepherd spends so much, the sheep rather spend so much time with the shepherd, amen, that he will never stray again. My brother, my sister, amen, if God has to break a leg so that we will never stray again, I thank God that God knows best. Amen. And the fact that God knows best, God will heal and Jesus will fix it for you as he did for me. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, amen, I know that God will use modern medicine. God will heal us in eternity. God is going to heal us, my brother and my sister, by way of redemption of the body. Amen. And he will do this at the rapture and he will do it at the resurrection. There's coming a rapture of the church. One day when this dead in Christ shall rise, everyone else that are alive and remain are going to be caught up to meet Jesus in the air. And there's coming a resurrection when one day, amen, the voice of the trump shall sound and the dead in Christ will hear his voice and he will say, come on up higher. Amen. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. As I make my way to close, my brother and my sister, amen, you are now invited to come. All who labor and are heavy laden, you are invited to come. Jesus has promised to give you rest. I invite you to come this morning because we're going to the Lord's table. I invite you to come this morning because at the Lord's table, we're going to see something going on here. The doctor became sick so that the patient could live. The doctor became sick so that the patient could be well. I'm here to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, this morning that Jesus Christ was wounded and bruised, amen, so that you could be well. And I thank God that he paid the price. He paid it all. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, I'm here to tell you, amen, sin is a picture. Amen. Um, disease is a picture of sin. But I want you to know there's a healer in the house. Amen. Since I know he healed, that was a disease, amen, in the Bible called leprosy. Amen. And leprosy was supposed to be an uncurable disease. But my brother, my sister, I stopped by to tell you, I know it can be healed because Jesus healed it. But before that, amen, there was a man by the name of Naaman. He was told to dip seven times in the old Jordan River. You got to obey God instantly like Joseph when God said do it. Amen. Don't look around and ask who is he talking to when God speaks, my brother and sister, and he's speaking today. There's some things that you only you know what the Lord has told you. You don't know what the Lord told me. You don't know when. You don't know where. You don't know how. But God told me, amen, what was best for my situation. And God has spoken to you about your situation. I say this as a pastor, when people come to me for counseling, amen, people come in wanting me to agree with what they're saying. I let them tell me what they are saying, and then I try to get them to see, God has already showed you what you need to do. 
I don't need to contradict what God has shown you. You just go back home and do what God has told you to do. Amen. My preacher from home years ago said, God put you and your wife together and y'all don't need to be acting foolish, shooting at one another. You know better than that. So don't even come to me and talk to me about it. Amen. Certain things you know better. You don't even need to bring to God. Amen. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters at Calvary, amen, we thank God that the doctor became sick so that we could became, become well. He's here today to heal you by faith, amen. He's here to forgive you of your sin. And therefore, my brother and my sister, it's been said, I got it from Facebook, but it was a good point. There is breaking news. There's breaking news. There's headline news. And you need to tune in, amen, because your case has been settled, amen. God has remembered you. Jesus has paid it all. He was born to die. He died, and he died like a man, and he rose like God. Give God some praise, my brothers and sisters. At this time, we recognize that Jesus is the human name. Christ is his title. Amen. Jesus, link, Jesus linked, uh, his, his name Jesus links him to mankind, and he is identified with us. And my brother, my sister, he is the most wonderful person that there is in the world, and he is God with us. At this time, we prepare now for our communion service. Amen. We ask that you uh, get your elements as we hear our selection. Let us break bread together. And afterwards, the Reverend James Russ will lead us, amen, in partaking of the Lord's table. God bless. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we just come preparing ourselves for the Lord's table. Realizing through your, uh, through your blood, it gives us power. Through the bread from your broken body, Lord, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. As we prepare for this service, the, the remorse service, Lord, we just look up into Jesus, the author, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Let every heart say amen. Uh, our strips of reading will be coming from Matthew uh, 26, verse 26. We're going to go down to verse 30. And it reads, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it 
and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Let us all eat and be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. And he took, verse 27, and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. Let us drink and be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Verses 28 and 29 and 30 reads, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new to in my Father's kingdom. Finally, verse 30. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. We just thank God for God's love and his blood and having a relationship with him. We do have each other. And we just thank God and may God have a blessing to the hills and the doers of his holy word. God bless you. Amen. Amen. We bless God for Reverend Russ. Amen. Leading us as we partake of the Lord's table. Amen. Rem representative of the symbolic death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. His shed blood and his broken body. At this time, we just want to uh, make you aware of the fact that uh, in our community, uh, early voting will begin tomorrow, uh, the Senate runoff election, and we were asking that you do your civic duty. Please vote because it is your right to participate and exercise your right to vote. So please vote in the upcoming election. You came out for the uh, presidential election, so let us go come out for the Senate election. Amen. Also, uh, there will be a community drive-by Christmas dinner this Saturday, the 19th. Uh, Christmas dinners will be distributed uh, from the community, uh, for the community at the Greater Mount Canaan Missionary Baptist Church. And it's located 2573 Wheeler Road. Now, the event is being sponsored by the Greater Mount Canaan Missionary Baptist Church, Dr. Victor R. Thomas, pastor, and the Coming Grove Baptist Church, where Dr. Norris Rouse is pastor. And it's also being sponsored by the Gardner Grove Baptist Church, with myself as pastor. So we just bless God for the uh, community Christmas dinner this Saturday. And the time now is 2.30 to 4 o'clock. Let us not forget the time. It is 2.30 to 4 o'clock. We bless God and thank God for this opportunity to break bread and commune together. We ask that you go forth and do as God would have us to do. Go forth and be a blessing one to another. We just pray that this will be a high time, a high Christmas season, a Christmas season as never before when we will truly try to meet the needs and we want to ask those that have a need within the body, if you will, call one of the deacons, or you can call me, and I really mean it, you can call me on my home or cell phone. Let's stay in touch. We're better together. We need to stay connected. Let us look to God for our benediction. Almighty God, our Father, we humble our hearts and we bow our heads, and we thank you now, Lord. Lord, we just pray that we continue to reach out and touch others' hand, and try to make this world a better place if we can. Lord, we can do it, Father God, because you have given us the resources, you've given us the heart, the mind, the determination, and the will to do better. And Father God, it is to your glory. We just pray now, if we have overlooked or forgotten anyone, that you will meet their needs according to your riches and glory, and give us, Father God, the awareness to reach out. And Father God, we just pray now that the love of God, grace of God, communion fellowship of the Holy Spirit. May he forever rest by, rule and keep the hearts of these thy people connected and together. It's to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Church said, Amen. 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 Amen.
and amen together. Amen. God bless you. As always, we thank you for tuning in to our live broadcast. Next week's service will begin at 11 o'clock a.m. We hope you have experienced the sweet love of God in this place. Remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. So on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Rufus Copeland, and our First Lady, Sister Sarah Copeland, and the GGBC family, we wish you a blessed Christmas and a Happy New Year. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born.